Hello everyone, welcome back to our Redis tutorial series. In this video we are going to be building a, a Redis cache. So this is our first implementation of a cache and we are going to take a look and see how we can build one. In the previous video we have uh, worked through the configuration and the installation of the Redis server and we also hooked up our um, default Spring Boot project. So we uh, downloaded all of the dependencies that we needed, we set everything up and we built a small Redis list cache, which for now we are going to ignore, we are going to move to a, a bit simpler cache, let's say so. As you can see here, uh, my Redis server is running as before, so it's on the default port and um, I have it running. So keep in mind, if something doesn't work with your application, make sure that your server is actually running. In the previous video, we explained how you can start it. So if you're having issues with that, just go back to the video and everything should be clear. Perfect. So um, let's start. Let's see what we want to do. In this video, we want to build a cache that's um, able to actually um, cache some simple values. We're going to be using a DTO. As you can see here, I prepared the DTO folder, uh, so a package where we're going to build um, our DTO to store and our um, cache will be, be basically able to store any kinds of uh, data from strings, integers, a uh, bit more complex things, DTOs and stuff like that. So let's build a new class. We're going to build a new class um, for our uh, value operations, they're called in Redis. And uh, with that class, we are going to take a look at how we can uh, cache something, how we can read from the cache and how we can actually uh, remove it from the cache. So uh, let's start, let's create a new class and name it um, something like Redis value operations. actually Redis value cache. So we're going to, through this tutorial, we're going to have different uh, types of caches. Like we had this Redis list cache, we are going to build some different ones. Okay, so uh, as always, the Redis value cache is going to be a service. And uh, let me just switch my language here. And in this service, we are going to be using our Redis template. So same as what we had before. And we are going to now be using so-called Redis value operations. Okay, with that being done, uh, let's create a constructor. Into the constructor, we're just going to be passing in the Redis template, so we don't need to pass the value operations. And actually now looking at it, we don't really need the Redis template itself. So we're not going to be using it. We just need it to get the value operations from it. And that's it. So uh, it's quite simple. Uh, if we jump to the value operations here, we can see that these are the operations for simple string values. And here they offer a few methods. So there is a set method. There is a set method with timeout. There is a yeah, um, different things that you can take a look. We're just going to look at few of them, but all of them here are available to you. So you can just go through them and uh, see what you can do. So let's go back. Let's create the first one. So we want to be able to cache something. So let's create a method for that. And then after I create it, I will explain what we exactly are doing. And that's it. Yeah, it's quite actually simple. So we're passing in uh, a key, which is a type of string and some object to actually cache here. Um, maybe we can take a look at uh, one thing that we saw that maybe uh, be interesting for you. So if we jump back uh, to the value operations, here you can see that we have this simple method where we uh, set some key and some value, but here we have also a timeout and a time unit. So this is quite a nice thing. Uh, it actually allows you to set a timeout on the value that you're entering to the cache. So you can say, yeah, I'm entering something to this cache and it's only um, going to be valuable or going to last for a certain amount of time. For example, one minute. You enter something in a cache and it's there for one minute. After one minute, Redis takes care of it. It just evicts it from the cache. 
So that's quite a nice thing that you can have. Uh, in some other tutorial, we'll probably be looking at it, like for example, for the locks that you can create. That's a, a nice thing to utilize. But for this tutorial, it's uh, not really important, but you can actually try it out for yourself. So instead of calling this method, you can try to call this one and see when you're trying to fetch the, um, the value, if you can fetch it after the timeout has expired. You should not be able to because the Redis should take care of it and remove the value. Okay, great. So we are able to cache something. Let's see how we can actually uh, fetch something from the cache. So let's uh, create a method to which we are going to be passing in a string key. And then from our Redis server, we are going to be requesting some value that's possibly stored with that key. So let's see how that looks like. And that's it. So it's quite simple. To our uh, method, we are passing in a string, which is our key, and the value ops we are using to get the value that's behind that key. If there is no value behind the key, the value operations will just return null. And let me see what it's complaining about. Ah, okay, so this one can be final. Great. With that being done, let's take a look at one last thing, which is how we can uh, delete something from the cache. So let's just create a method which deletes a value from the cache based on the string key that we pass in. As you can see here, uh, for the deleting of the value is a bit more different. So we are still passing in our key, but from the value operations, we also use this method uh, get operations, which returns the Redis operations. And from it, from this interface, we can uh, use the delete and, and so delete method and delete the value that's stored behind this key. If it's not there, uh, we just remove it. You might be wondering how can you uh, update something in the cache? Actually calling this method would automatically update it. So if you have uh, something stored behind some key and you want to pass in some new data, some updated data, you can just recall this method and it would update it for you. So it won't create a duplicate or something to just update the existing value. Great. Now with this being done, uh, let's create our DTO. So our cache itself is basically finished. So we have our uh, basic implementation of it. Uh, let's create a DTO that we are going to be using to store. So let's create a new Java class. Let's name it something like person DTO. And our person DTO is going to have a couple of properties. So let's just create it really fast. So our person has an ID, it has a name and also has some integer which represents the person age. So let's create also getters and setters for these. In order to store this DTO in Redis, it needs to be serializable. So we need to implement the interface. And that's about it for our person DTO. It's basically done. So now let's create a new package for a controller. This is where the dependency to the uh, REST interfaces come in because we want to be able to call this from our uh, Postman, so from some uh, REST client. So let's create a package, call it controller and create a new person controller inside. So our person controller will be the, our access point where we are going to have the endpoints to cache the person so to basically to interact with uh, the cache that we just created so let's um, make this a uh, rest controller with some uh, endpoint so our rest controller will be on the api slash person endpoint and in it we are going to be auto wiring the service that we just created so if we go to our service package we have the redis uh, value cache so this is something that we need to auto wire here Great. Now with that being done, uh, let's create some endpoints. The first endpoint that we want to do is the one where we are going to be caching something. So we need a post mapping on this API person endpoint and to which we are going to be passing the body, which will be the DTO that we previously created. So um, let's take a look at it, how we can do that. So uh, to our cache person, so to our endpoint, we're going to be passing in the person DTO 
and we are going to be using the DTO ID, so the person ID as a key in, uh, in Redis, and we are going to be storing the entire present DTO here. Great, now let's create an endpoint, a uh, get endpoint where we can fetch this person based on the ID that we forward. And that is it. So we have our get mapping on the API slash person slash person ID and the person get person method returns the object from the cache, which we have to cast to the person DTO. And that's it. We are passing in the ID, which is again our key. And yeah, it's quite simple. Now let's create a delete mapping where we can actually delete the cached person again based on its ID. Again, quite simple, a delete mapping, uh, adding the ID there, and again, calling the delete cached value from our value cache. Quite simple and actually easy to do. So let's start our application. And once we have started it, we are going to be using some um, REST uh, client to actually make some requests on our application. So as we can see, our application has started here. You can see the message that we showed in the previous video. And I will be starting on my Postman now to be able to actually execute these uh, requests. Perfect. So let's create, uh, yeah, let's create our person. So we go to localhost 8080. Oh, there's some update. We're going to just dismiss it. Dismiss it. And in the body, we are going to be using raw and let's just switch to JSON. And that's it. So we are making a, a post request on this endpoint with this data. So it's an ID, a name and an age, exactly what our um, person DTO has. So let's send this. Uh, we can see that some message is being logged, that something is being finished. Great. Now let's actually see if it worked. So let's just copy this and paste it here. Okay. Forgot that. And then if we go slash one, two, three and make this request, if everything went well and our um, object was cached, we should get it back. And as you can see, we do get whatever we cached. If I change the ID to something that doesn't exist, we don't get anything because it's, it does not exist. So let's see how we can um, make this work. Yeah, you can see it here. Great. Let's now execute our delete and send it. And as you can see, it's gone. If we uh, now go back to get and try to execute it, it's not there. If we would cache it again, go back to get, execute, it's there. Of course, if you kill your server and start it back up, the cached values will be gone. So that's also a thing. Let's quickly see how we can use that uh, nice set method uh, where we have some timeout. So instead of using this one, let's just comment it out and say valueops.set. We have our key, we have our data, and let's say our cache uh, will last for Hmm, four seconds. Not days. I don't want to wait 4,000 days. I want to wait 4,000 milliseconds. We have to uh, restart our application to for this change to take place. And then we should be able to uh, go back to ours. So if we execute get, we still have the previous cached one. So if we go to delete, Let's delete it, go back to get. We now do not have it. And now let's cache it again. It's there, we are able to fetch it. And now after some time, Redis should take care of it. So after four seconds, Redis should take care of it and it should be removed as you can see it is. Perfect. So we saw uh, how it does works 
hopefully that makes it a bit clear i'll revert it to the change so you can just try out a new timeout uh, on your own perfect let's get rid of this import and that's about it so we created dto we are able to cache it fetch it from the cache and delete it from the cache and this ends um this video in the next one we are going to be taking a look at our nice friend here redis list cache so we're going to make it a bit prettier than this but hopefully uh, what we did in this tutorial video was uh, clear enough and you are able to understand it. If not, please do let me know and then I will try to explain it uh, a little bit better so that you can get the understanding. Okay, great. Then uh, hopefully I will see you also in the next video. And if you like this one, please do like it and subscribe to my channel for more awesome content like this. So I'll see you in the next one.